Hi everyone and welcome along to the Ergonomically Speaking podcast, the podcast that aims to help you reduce and even eliminate work-related discomfort. I'm your host Neve Pentney of Boyne Ergonomics. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope that you're able to take away some useful practical advice from this podcast to help you reduce your own risk of discomfort at the workplace or help manage the risks among the people that you might be responsible for. So now that we know why we're here, let's get started. Hello, hello, and welcome along to episode 26 of the Ergonomically Speaking podcast, where today I'm going to be talking to you about why we get low back and leg discomfort when we're working at the computer and what we can do to prevent it or at least reduce the impact that it has. There's definitely, um, there's no doubt that low back pain and leg pain, it is a significant problem for people that work in computer based or desk based jobs. And while this discomfort can generally start at the workstation, it can go on and impact your quality of life outside of work. And according to the Global Burden of Disease study back in, it was back in 2001, back pain has been reported as being one of the leading global causes of years lived with disability. Now, I am actually laughing to myself at the irony of doing this podcast this week because I myself am actually in the middle of a sciatic flare up. I have issues with my low back dating back to my teens. I won't say how long ago that is now, but the last few weeks have been incredibly busy with work and life and self-care took a bit of a backseat. And now as a consequence, since yesterday, I have now been having a flare up of sciatica, which is impacting my low back and my right leg. And if anyone can see me at the moment, I'm hobbling around because I cannot really wait bare. And that is my own fault, even though my workstation is set up really well and I take my micro breaks. The one thing I haven't been doing is doing my exercise and keeping an eye on my back and how it's feeling. Kind of pushed it to the back, focused on other things, paying for it now. So it is a really, really big problem. And for a lot of people, it is preventable. Now, I'm aware that not all back issues and not all leg issues are caused by having a desk-based job or being quite sedentary in your job. But even if there are factors outside of this that are causing the problem, for example, like an injury from a car crash or a genetic disorder or a degenerative disorder, but definitely some of the things I'm going to talk about now can impact how severe these symptoms get, even if they're not caused by the actual workstation itself. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to identify the potential causes of the low back and the leg discomfort that I hear about all the time from people that I work with and what we can do to reduce the risk of developing these issues or in the case of pre-existing issues, well, what we can do to manage it and to reduce the impact that it has on us. So the factors that increase the risk of lower back pain and leg discomfort. There's a few of them. I usually group them into four. So the first one I look at is prolonged static sitting and also prolonged static standing, which I did discuss in the episode about static postures. And I have a blog post on the episode if you want to go back and reference that. But I'll go into a little bit here. So. Specifically, if we look at static seated postures, so if you're sitting there in your chair and irregardless of how good your chair is, it might be a top of the line, really expensive, fully adjustable ergonomic office chair. It could be a bench. It could be your average dining chair. When you are seated upright, this requires a continuous contraction of the muscles in your hip and your back. This continuous contraction or what we call static loading in this fixed position well, firstly, it causes reduced blood flow to the muscles because we don't have the pumping action of the muscles helping to circulate the blood through the body. And also, because they're contracted, the blood cannot get into the muscles as effectively, but also the waste products cannot get out of it as effectively. This causes fatigue and general discomfort, and this contributes to aches and pains. Generally speaking, the lactic acid itself causes inflammation to the small, tiny muscle fibers. 
And we need to be mobile, as I've said before many times, to let the muscles relax and restore circulation. So prolonged static seated postures cause fatigue and discomfort in the muscles that are working to keep us upright at the desk. And over time, this is going to cause aches and pains and stiffness that you feel at the workstation. Also, if you have a look at the discs in your back, the little spongy discs in between your vertebrae, sitting increases the pressure on these discs, particularly the ones in the lower back, because they're being compressed from above and below. The level of pressure in the disc, it varies based on your seated position. But if you take the pressures in your disc at a standing posture as being maybe 100%. Seated upright increases that pressure to 140% of the standing pressures. But when you lean forward, that goes up to 190%. So if you think of somebody hunched over a laptop or people leaning forward on their desks when they're typing, you're really, really increasing the pressure on those discs. And what's going to happen is this prolonged compression is going to accelerate wear and tear to the edges of the discs because they're bulging outwards. Everybody over their lifespan will get some level of degenerative changes in their discs because it's part of aging. But this prolonged constant pressure and constant compression is going to accelerate that. And also, the prolonged sitting reduces the pumping action. Again, constant compression means that you are not getting enough nutrients to your discs because they don't have their own blood flow. They need this, they to de- sorry, they need to decompress and this you know movement around them to help feed them, and that can also contribute to degenerative changes. If we look at somebody who has a sedentary role and has had it for quite a while, or I often think of students coming out of college and going into desk-based jobs. Spending a lot of our time sitting causes imbalances in the core stabilizer muscles, basically because some muscles become overused and tight, if you think of the hip flexor and the hamstring, and others are just not used enough during the day, so they're not activated. So if you think of your core and your glutes, so you've got tight lower back muscles, weak cores, weak glutes, tight hamstrings, tight hip flexors, it's all out of whack and out of balance. And these imbalances, they can affect your alignment, they can affect your posture, and they can cause pain in the hips and the lower back. So that's prolonged sitting in a bit of a nutshell. When I talk about prolonged postures, prolonged sitting, basically you're talking about reduced blood flow and continuous contraction, pressure on your discs, and then over time an imbalance in your core stabilizer muscles that can actively cause reduced functionality alignment, posture, and cause pain. The second factor I look at when it comes to causes of back and leg discomfort at the desk is poor lumbar support. So if you think about it, like obviously your lumbar spine curves inward. Our spines are not straight. They're S-shaped. And the lumbar spine curves inward. And because of the shape of the spine, the discs and the lower back, they do come under a lot of pressure when you sit. And the reason that office chairs are designed with the kind of back race that curves outward is so that it sits into the part of your back that curves inward. So essentially, it's supposed to fit against your back like a jigsaw piece and provide that support to the lower spine when you sit. And a well-adjusted, well-fitting chair will do that. But if you have a chair that either has really poor lumbar support, the lumbar support's not adjustable, or it just doesn't have any. So you could be sitting on your kitchen chair, sitting on a bench, sitting on a stool. There's no support there. And that means that your back has to essentially work harder to keep you upright. The discs are under more pressure because there's nothing there to take any of the load. It's doing all the work. So that actually can cause low back pain. So lumbar support when you're seated. And I'm not just talking about the desk, really. If you're working at the desk, of course, make sure your lumbar spine is supported. But even if you're sitting at home on the sofa, when you're in the car, any time that we're going to be seated for more than a few minutes, I would always try to make sure that the lower back is supported. The third factor that we look at 
is adverse postures. So adverse posture, basically, it's any posture that puts excessive strain on the musculoskeletal system. And usually when we talk about the DSE workstation, adverse or poor postures happen because of incorrect positioning relative to your equipment, inappropriate equipment, so you don't have the right equipment for what you need to do, fatigue, which kind of harks back a little bit to the prolonged sitting because, as I've said, the muscles get tired and that fatigue can cause poor postures. And the other one is just pure bad habits. And we all have bad habits at the desk, things we've picked up over the years that make us feel comfortable, make us feel productive, but actually could be causing excessive strain. So I suppose over the last, definitely last two and a half years, probably the most common adverse posture I have seen at a workstation is being sitting too low for the desk. And this is usually, especially in early, early home working times, because people were working at the kitchen table with the kitchen chair. And the relationship between the height of a dining chair and the height of the dining table, there's usually quite a gap between those two heights, which meant that for a lot of people, when they sat on the kitchen chair and put the hands on the desk and let the shoulder relax, the elbow was dropping below the table. And they would then have to compensate for that by sitting more upright in an unsupported position to try and get a bit of height in the torso or raising or pulling the shoulders out to try and get the elbows up onto the table without contact stress from the edge of the table. So that's the most common adverse posture I've seen, as well as, of course, if we think of the forward-leaning hunch posture associated with working on a laptop. Um, Another cause is when people are using sit-stand desks, They actually have the desk at the wrong height for their own stature when they're standing. Crossing your legs is another one when you're sitting at the desk and that puts a lot of pressure on your hips. And another one is sliding forward in the seat. So instead of having your bum back against the bottom of the backrest, people kind of tilt the pelvis and slide their bum forward. And that posture in itself puts a huge amount of strain on the lower back and on the hips. So Adverse postures, whether they're caused by poor positioning, the wrong equipment, fatigue, or just pure bad habits, they put excessive strain just by their nature of of being adverse postures. They put excessive strain on the spine, the discs, the tissues, and also increase the work and stress on the hip and back muscles. And the final factor, work-related factor that I'll talk about, I'm not going to touch manual handling. For now, I think I might cover that later on. But the last kind of workstation related factor that can cause discomfort in the lower back and the legs is contact stress. And I feel this is one that a lot of people overlook themselves when they're at the desk. And it can usually impact the legs. So normally, when I'm looking at somebody at a DSE workstation, the the contact stress that would cause discomfort in the legs is normally going to come. From the seat of the chair. So, for example, if the seat pan is too deep, and you'll know if it's too deep, because when you sit back with your back against the backrest, the front edge of the seat will be in contact with the back of your knees. If you have no space between the back of your knees and the front of the seat, well, then the seat pan is too deep for you. So, if the seat pan is too deep, and you sit back in it, and it's coming into contact with the back of your knees. That can impact circulation to your legs because you've got excessive compression on the back of the knees. If you're seated too high, so for example, if you are like me, vertically challenged, and when you are seated at the right height for your workstation, your feet just cannot fully plant on the ground. They just don't fully reach the floor. Well, If you have your legs just kind of dangling down and you don't have that stability under your feet, that is going to increase the pressure between the seat pan and your thighs. And again, that's going to impact circulation to the lower limbs. And finally, if the seat pan itself is hard or doesn't have an appropriate level of padding, this is going to increase pressure between the seat pan and your thighs. And these three factors can all reduce the circulation to your lower limbs. And this can cause discomfort 
And other symptoms like um, pins and needles and tingling and the feeling like your feet are going to sleep and can also cause swelling. So it is really, really important um, to try and maintain circulation to your legs when you're sitting. So I find that contact stress is something that gets a little bit overlooked. A lot of people will have awareness about sitting at the right height and sitting back in their chair, but they don't really think about the seat pan itself and where it fits in to their own stature. So those are the four factors that I generally find cause low back pain or leg discomfort at the computer workstation. But what can we do about it? Well, if those are the four factors that cause it, well, then obviously we're going to look to address those four factors. And here's how we can do it. So if we're looking at prolonged sitting, prolonged static sitting, prolonged static standing. Well, the answer to that is quite simple. We need to move more. And it just sounds so, so easy to say it, but I know in reality it's not that easy. I generally recommend taking a regular break from the desk every 45 minutes for one or two minutes to decompress the discs in the lower back, to activate the glutes and core, and to relieve tension in the back and shoulder muscles and help boost your circulation. It doesn't have to be for long. And I know when I, when I initially talk to people about taking these micro breaks every 45 minutes, they kind of get a bit overwhelmed because they think I mean that you need to go off for 15 minutes every 45 minutes and they, they wonder and they stress about how that's going to impact productivity and their availability at the desk. You don't have to do that. You're simply just trying to change position, walk around, and come back. So as I try and explain, it's like when you're in the office and you're getting up to go to the printer and you come back. It's that simple, one or two minutes of movement. The key though is to do it frequently. So instead of sitting for two hours and moving for five or ten minutes, well really all you're trying to do there is address any inflammation that's built up and that's not really going to happen. So it means when you come back to the desk after the five minutes, you're probably still going to have some tension and discomfort. You haven't resolved it. The idea behind the 45 minutes is to try and move position before the lactic acid has a chance to accumulate in your muscles, before the muscles have a chance to get fatigued and inflamed. And that way, when you get up, you're activating one group, you're letting the next group recover, but there should be no residual discomfort when you come back to the desk. So it just essentially what I say is helps keep the body taken over. If you use a sit-stand workstation, make sure to change your position frequently. As I address in the static posture blog post and um, podcast episode, static standing, it is as bad for you as prolonged static sitting. If you have a sit-stand workstation, adjust your posture frequently. That is the key to it. But remember, these postural adjustments are not a substitution for these micro breaks. You still need to leave the desk frequently for one or two minutes to give your body a break. And you can do this, like obviously if you can't leave the desk, the next best thing to do is stand. Take calls on the move where you can. Invest in a wireless headset because it gives you a little bit more freedom if your job is really heavy on video calls. And download a break reminder app on your phone so you actually remember to move. Life is busy, work is busy. We all have great intentions. But I find putting that reminder externally onto the phone and put the phone away from you that you can't reach it from the desk that can be a good way of tricking ourselves into getting this regular change of posture and movement that we really, really need. So the second thing to do then is to make sure your lower back is supported. So if you're using a chair with a backrest that can't be adjusted for whatever reason, add extra cushioning or add a foam lumbar support that you can position into your lower back. I would avoid prolonged use of seating that does not have a backrest. And I'm talking about your benches, your stools, your Swiss balls, your kneeling chairs, especially with the Swiss balls and kneeling chairs. Like they're great tools and they absolutely do have their benefits and their uses, but not for continuous use. They shouldn't be your sole seating. If you have an office chair that can be adjusted, well, make sure that you have adjusted it. Take the time to familiarize yourself with the backrest adjustments and all the adjustments on the chair. Make sure the lumbar bump, run your hand down the back, you should feel that bump. That bump or support, if you can visibly see it, should be positioned in your lower back. Make sure you adjust the recline angle so that when you're in your natural typing position, 
your back is resting against the backrest and you're not coming forward away from it. If you're, that can be a really bad habit that people pick up, especially if they're reading something on the screen that requires a lot of concentration or they're particularly stressed. People tend to tense up and come forward. If you catch yourself doing that, bring yourself back to the backrest and pull your keyboard and mouse close. When we look at reducing the adverse postures, well, firstly, make sure you're the right height for your surface. As I said, it's one of the most common adverse postures I've seen, and it's through positioning. When your shoulders are relaxed and you have your hands sitting on the table, your elbows should be the same level as the table. And if needed, put support under your foot, like a footrest or a foam roller or a yoga brick, if you need it. Make sure your monitor is at the right height so that when you're sitting back in your chair with your ear over your shoulder and you're looking straight ahead, you're looking at the top third of your screen. Slightly lower for you if you are very focused. If you're using a laptop or a tablet, make sure you have external keyboard and mouse and raise the height of the laptop or tablet so it's in line with you when you look straight ahead. Keep anything you use frequently quite close to you. So your keyboard, your mouse, notepads, anything that you use a lot, even if it's a desk phone, not so much anymore, but some people do still use a desk phone. Anything you use a lot, keep close to you to avoid reaching and forward leaning. And remember, sit back into the chair. Let the chair hold your back. Avoid crossing your legs at the knees. Use a footrest or a foam roller if you need to to help facilitate some movement in the lower limbs at the desk. It's just crossing the legs. Aside from the circulation issue it causes, it does put a lot of stress on the hips and lower back. And finally, we want to reduce contact stress. So to do that, when you're sitting at the workstation, make sure you have support under your feet if you cannot rest your heels on the floor. If the seat pan is in contact with the back of your knees when you're sitting back in the chair, well then, if you cannot adjust the depth of the seat, because some chairs do have that adjustment, but if you can't, use a cushion or a foam backrest behind you. So it means you don't have to sit so far back in the chair to get the support. So you're kind of um, artificially, in a, in a roundabout way, reducing the depth of the seat pan by actually bringing the support closer to you. And if your seat pan is too hard, add a cushion, a foam seat wedge or foam seat cushion to reduce the contact stress on the pressure on the thighs when you're sitting down. So like I said, the, the back pain and the discomfort, it might not be caused by the desk, but these factors, if they are present, they can aggravate it. And make any underlying conditions or any injuries slightly feel worse when you're at the desk. Generally speaking, if you can maintain an active, healthy lifestyle, which incorporates Pilates and yoga, I would always say Pilates for me is is key. And I can feel it now that I've missed it for a few weeks. Um, But it can certainly help address some of the risks that a general sedentary job and sedentary lifestyle has. If you start to develop low back pain or discomfort in your legs and it starts to persist and it's, it's impacting your functional ability and it's not going away despite adjustments that you're making. I definitely recommend getting in touch with your doctor or your physiotherapist to try and identify a cause and offer some treatment solutions. It's very, very important that if you are feeling discomfort at the workstation, that you let your employer know, get it addressed as early as possible and that includes an ergonomic risk assessment so that we can reduce the levels of discomfort and any potential long-term impact. And I'm always a pain to say this to people. Do not be afraid to approach your employer if you're feeling discomfort at the desk, because the sooner something can be addressed and rectified, the less impact it has on your life, on your functional ability, and I suppose long-term impact it has on your own health and well-being. I have had so many ergonomic risk assessments where for example if I take the wrist for example I meet with somebody who has maybe symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome or tennis elbow and I ask them oh when did this start and it's six months ago eight months ago nine months ago and it started as a niggle and then it got worse and it got worse and then they only bring it to their employer when it actually starts to impact their ability to do their job whereas really we should be bringing this up to the employer much much earlier So definitely, if you're feeling any discomfort or having any issues with the workstation, let your employer know as soon as possible. So that covers what we can do to help reduce the risk of discomfort in the lower back and legs. 
at the computer workstation. The next episode is going to address the upper back, the neck and the shoulders, because definitely over the last two and a half years, this area um, has been impacted quite heavily with laptop use and remote working. So I know anecdotally myself, I've seen a huge increase in the reports of neck, upper back and shoulder discomfort. So we're going to have a look at that and what we can do to help reduce that. Until then, everybody stay well. Um, I should also say, which I never have before, but I, I will. Um, if you know of anyone who you think might benefit from some of this advice or is having issues at work and they've just kind of brought up in conversation, please feel free to recommend my podcast to them. I'm sure at this point, it's probably an episode to suit them. And if not, they can always get in touch and we can we can put it as a topic on the list to cover for them. But definitely, if you think there's anyone that would benefit from this, please feel free to recommend it to them. I will put, as always, the link to the blog post and all my social media details in the show notes. And until next time, everybody stay well.